Hi there, and finally I've gotten to the question uh, or the topic that I've been promising you for a while now, and that's adding and subtracting fractions. Now, this is generally one of the most difficult topics when it comes to adding fractions, um, and I'm not exactly sure why, uh, but I, I suppose it is a little bit odd. But let me go back to just saying what I've said from the very beginning of this course, is that when we add, we can only add things that are the same. Okay, we can only add things that are the same. And when we work with fractions, the, numer the numerator tells me how many, how many, and the denominator tells me of what how many of what so for example if I have 1 over 2 I have 1 and the 2 tell me I have I'm working with a half so I've got one half okay if I have to add to that 3 2 that means I've got 3 and 2 tells me half I've got three halves. So to add these things together, I'm adding halves together. They, they're the same things. So I'm allowed to add them together. In other words, when the denominators are the same, I'm allowed to add the numerators. Because I've got one half plus another half, or three halves, that gives me a, a total of four halves. Now four halves means if, if every two means it's two halves plus another two halves and two halves make a whole so this thing in the end in, ends up being two and we've looked at uh, another ways of finding that two like saying two divides into itself once and into four two times you can look at it like that as well um, but point being the only way we could simplify this was to add to, to, to make sure that our denominators were the same and then we could just add the numerators now imagine what I am working with is a half there's my half and I'm also adding to that half a quarter so here I have a half and then I add to it a quarter now you can easily see that that means I've got three quarters Let's see if I can draw three quarters okay a half, there's the half, and there's the quarter, which means I've got three quarters, you can see this. But why is it called three quarters? A half plus a quarter is three quarters. That is because I've got three quarters. Okay, but how could we add these two things? This one was a half, okay, so this is one half plus one quarter. Then why, how do we get three quarters? Well, the point is that even though they are not the same, they can be changed to be the same. So for example, let me just wipe out this. Okay. For example, if I take my half and I halve it. So if I ask, okay, a half is how many quarters? Well, it's two quarters. So in other words, Finding an equivalent fraction, we did that, we've done that already. A half is two quarters. So if I have a half, I actually have two quarters. So adding to that one quarter gives me a total of two quarters, plus one quarter gives me three quarters. Now sometimes the answer I get can be simplified further. Okay, that's not impossible. In this case, not. Three quarters is the simplest form for this fraction. But that's how I add fractions. Okay, so what is it about? How can I systematically always find the common denominator? That's what we call this, the common denominator between these two. Let me uh, do a little bit more challenging one. Let's say I have two thirds. It's difficult to visualize. 2 thirds plus 3 quarters. Okay, what would be the common denominator to add these? Now remember, 
I can change this fraction into any other equivalent fraction. For example, here, I instead of writing a half, I write, wrote it as two quarters. Two quarters is exactly the same as a half, so I didn't change anything. I just wrote it as a, with a different representation. Okay. So what representation can we use to change this denominator into a four? Well, it's impossible. There's nothing I can multiply three with to get four. No, no whole number at least. And for four, there's nothing I can do with it to get three. So I must find a common one for that both of them can multi uh, divide into, and it's called the least common. The least common multiple. Okay. Now, how we can find the least common multiple is by uh, breaking it up into their prime factors. So, for three, we have three, and for four, we have two times two. And then we take all of the prime numbers that are represented uh, at least as many times as they are represented. So, for example, our denominator has to have a three and it has to have two twos times two okay and that's that's the the, the, the uh, case for both of them it has to have a three in the denominator and it has to have two twos now three times two is six times two is twelve so actually what we have here is twelve plus twelve now what did I do with the three to get twelve I multiplied it with 4. And what did I do with the 4 to get 12? I multiplied it with 3. Now, when we work with equivalent fractions, we have to remember to do the same in the numerator than we did in the denominator. Since I multiplied it with a 4, I have to multiply this one with a 4. So, 8. 8 over 12 and 3 over 4 is exactly the same thing. Same here. I multiplied the denominator with a 3. I must multiply the numerator with a 3. So that's 9. So look here. All I did was to add the, fact, the, the uh, factors that I didn't have originally in the numerator and in the denominator. Here I didn't have the 3. So I add the 3 in the numerator. Sorry. And in the denominator. And then I simply simplify to get to that. So there is an easy way to do this. Um, Usually we just we just ask ourselves what can three and four go to? What's the smallest number three and four can divide into? And we can easily see it's twelve. The reason why I'm showing you this prime uh, number method is because it is going to be the method we use when it comes to algebraic fractions. Okay, so let's uh, do another example. First with uh, numbers. Let's um, I'm just going to think of a random number. Let's say 15, and let's say we have uh, 2 fifteenths plus, uh, let's say, 18. 18, and, and let's say we have 7 of them. Okay, so what is the least common multiple? What we do is we divide both of those, or factorize both of these into its prime factors. For 5, it's 3, 15, it's 3 times 5. For 18, it's 2 times 3 times 3. Okay, so I see my common multi my common uh, denominator, my least common denominator must have a 2. Okay, so this one needs a 2. So it already has a 2 uh, in the numerator, so that 2 must be multiplied with the numerator and in the denominator. Then I need two threes. Okay, now this one already has two threes. This one needs another three, so I can multiply the denominator and the numerator with a three. And then it needs a five. Okay, so this one needs a five. It already has a seven in the numerator that now also has to be multiplied with five. Okay, so let's simplify. Here you can see to, to work out in your head what can 15 and 18 go into the smallest number. It's a little bit difficult, but finding just the prime factors, which is 3 and 5, and this one, 2 and 3, and then changing those prime factors so that all of them, all of the prime factors are in both is, is quite simple. And then just adding the ones that weren't in the numerator as well. 
So here we have two times three. Uh, two times three. That's actually eighteen. Okay. Divided, and here we have two times three is six. Times five is thirty. Times three is ninety. So ninety is the smallest number that both of these values can go into. Seven times five is thirty-five, and here we have obviously 90 as well because 2 times 3 is 6 times 3 is 18 times 5 is 90 good so now we can add these together I've got 18 plus 35 that gives me 40 53 over 90 okay and uh, I think if I'm not mistaken 53 is a prime number so there's nothing that can divide into it and into 90 at the same time because 53 can't divide into 90 and this would then be my simplest form okay I'm not going to do some algebraic ones it's a first of first importance that you just see what is our steps let's just revise them first we find the least common multiple or LCD can okay, least common uh, no, LCM least common multiple for all uh, denominators that's our first step how do we do that is we prime factorize in other words factorize fully we prime factorize okay and then after we've done that we represent represent each each factor the most it occurs okay so if it uh, occurs more than once like here they were if I look at there 18 had was 2 times 3 times 3 so I had to represent 3 2 times okay so the most times in here there was only one 3 so I had to represent it twice okay uh, the most it occurs hope that makes sense and then to multiply the nums th that's now the numerators numerators with uh, missing factors okay and that's what we did here okay here we see we had 3 times 5, the missing factors was another 3 and the 2, so I multiplied the 2 with those missing factors as well. Same here, our missing factor was um, uh, 5, so I multiplied the 7 with the missing factor, and then I simply simplify. That's okay, then we simplify and add, simplify and add nums okay i hope that makes sense sorry this is a long video but this is an important topic and i really hope it helped you a little bit so let's see in the next video where we're going to look at some examples where we use actual algebra uh, algebraic expressions i mean i'll see you there